Let me tell you how beautiful and how precious the ocean is. All life comes from the ocean. When we're looking for life on other planets, we're always looking for water first. Even today, the ocean is feeding billions of people on this planet. And 90% of the goods that we are consuming every day has been transported by sea. Even this video that you're watching right now is transported by underwater cable. The internet is basically an underwater network. But unfortunately, we are destroying the ocean. We are overfishing it. We are pouring plastic, oil, chemical runoff from our agriculture, from our chemical process, from our cities. We are pouring all these greenhouse gases in the atmosphere that are actually acidifying the ocean. The ocean is where life started, and this is also our future. My name is Cesar Jung Harada. I'm a French-Japanese designer, I'm a professor at the Singapore Institute of Technology. And in the last uh, 15 years, I've dedicated my life for developing open source technologies for the ocean. In 2010, I moved to the Gulf of Mexico in America when the BPL spill happened. With a group of researchers, we developed a shape-shifting sailing robot. And the goal is to have a boat that can change shape in order to control a long uh, sponge, basically a sorbent, that can absorb oil. Then um, I moved to Hong Kong and I worked with the children from the Harbour School to develop a robot that would be taking pictures of plastic pieces. And so this is a robot made from hacked toys. And with this machine, we can actually measure the size of each piece of plastic. And we won the Jane Goodall Root and Shoot uh, Award. Then I'm half Japanese and I went to Japan and with a group of researchers again, we uh, measure radioactivity on the land, but also at the bottom of the sea. So we measure, we catch some sediments at the bottom of the sea near Fukushima, and then we measure radioactivity over there. In more recent times, I went to the Philippines and we map coral reefs in the Philippines. So we have this robot that takes thousands of pictures of the coral, and then we assemble them into a map, or we train an AI to classify those corals. In Hong Kong, I worked with the University of Hong Kong on an oyster hatchery. We made some machines that can float on the water and that can uh, get uh, oyster parents to make millions and millions of babies. The whole region is called the Pearl River Delta, Pearl from oysters. And so the idea here is to repopulate all those oysters that have been lost. Oysters are amazing. They filter water, they increase biodiversity, and as they grow as reef made of calcium, they are also sequestering carbon. So they're really doing a lot of great things for us. All these technologies have in common is that they are open source, which allow a lot of people to work together and make the technology more affordable and work faster. So I really see that those characteristics and this way of working can help us to address the climate change. The first workshop I'd like to invite you is the floating solar hydrogen. In this hands-on workshop, you'll learn to build floating solar panels, connect them to an electrolyzer, it will produce bubbles of oxygen and hydrogen, and then we store this hydrogen into those balloons. Usually we say that hydrogen is not very economic because we compare solar to hydrogen to solar to lithium ion batteries. But actually, in our case, we don't put hydrogen under high pressure, which means that we save a lot of energy and then money. And anyway, also, we don't, if we don't pressure hydrogen, it's actually much less dangerous. So the distribution can be very different and much more low cost than current technology. The second workshop that I'd like to invite you to is PROTE, the shape-shifting hull. Seafaring is actually very dangerous and every year there are thousands of people who die in the sea. Maybe they are fishermen or maybe they're unfortunately they are refugees. So seafaring is the world's most dangerous profession. With the shape-shifting hull, we can actually optimize and control better the ship and make ships more safe. The third workshop is the ocean train. We often compare the efficiency of the car and the train. Think of it like this. A car has big tires and a lot of friction on the wheels, whereas the train has very smooth running on a very smooth track. And also, a train, just the first car, has got to push the air, but all the other ones are just following, while the car has got to push the air just for itself. So, the train is much more efficient than a car in terms of energy. And so, hypothetically, a boat could work the same. And so we have done a bunch of experiments where we start to see that it would be possible 
to build a boat in the same way as we build a train. So with a similar efficiency and increase how much stuff we can carry in the ocean with much less energy. The fourth workshop that I'd like to invite you to is called Indigenous Future Outriggers. Singapore used to have thousands of beautiful sailing outriggers. You still have similar technologies in Polynesia, in Malaysia, Indonesia, and in the Philippines. They still in some places use the traditional ways. But sailing has evolved in a long way. And now we have extremely efficient solar, wind-powered, and hydrogen-powered vessels like the Energy Observer. What if we could combine the best indigenous traditional knowledge, local material, and the newest technology and all together? We're going to be working in open science, which means that anything we develop will be open source. If we develop something that is good for the climate, I believe it should be open source, because we don't have time to not share. Lastly, you know, I feel a lot of people have climate anxiety. Maybe you change what you eat, uh, you are commuting by bicycle to your work, uh, you're trying to not fly as much, uh, you're trying to recycle, but it doesn't feel like it's quite enough. And you feel that maybe you're too small to make a change. But Singapore is a very special place. It's an island that has access to all this brand new technology surrounded by the ocean. And the ocean literally controls the climate. The ocean covers 70% of the surface of the planet. And the sun heat, 90% of it is absorbed by the ocean. The ocean current then distributes this heat all around the planet. So literally, the ocean are controlling the climate. They are the main point of leverage if you want to have an impact on the climate. Instead of having climate anxiety and feeling you're part of the problem, I invite you to join this workshop and feel that you're part of the solution. Thank you.